going on there YouTube? Paint and body special here. I've got my K10 body. Um, I do plan to do a two-tone. Um, yeah, so let's get started. What I'm using, first thing I've done, this is Rust-Oleum sand in a gloss finish. Um, I just never use like the RC brand paints. They I mean, well, little, those little cans almost cost as much as one of these big cans. And the most all of these type paints now are formulated to be safe for plastic. They'll, they'll last on plastic pretty well. This plain old Rust-Oleum I've never had any trouble with on plastic. So I don't, yeah, it had never given me any, any real issue. I haven't used the gloss a whole lot, so I'm not sure yet um, how that's all going to play out. I usually use satin finish, that way the weathering powders and stuff take better. But, um, yeah, I've got everything painted, I've got a lot of coats on it, like I've got the tailgate outside drying. I do see a few spots on this that I didn't get very well. I painted this cab hanging from the, the nose, so some of the bottoms here, like on the uh, cow support inside the window here, is still a little green. I'm not sure if I want to... I don't really think it's worth repainting. I'm not sure yet. We'll just see. I was hoping to knock out all the two-tone today while the weather's still good. Um, my second color here is going to be antique white and rust-oleum gloss as well. And uh, I'm going to do the two-tone like what I have on the blazer and like what's on the fenders hanging in the back of the shop. You can see those back there hanging on the wall. So I'm going to kind of show you how I do that. It's not complicated or anything. I'm just going to share another thing with you just kind of behind the scenes of how I've been doing it alright guys so the way I like to do it I start on the cab we've got this nice body line right here on the front and that's kind of what I follow this is an old pinstriping tape for laying out flames and stuff from way back in the day when I did that kind of stuff um, not the greatest quality anymore but it gets the job done wouldn't hurt to buy some new stuff but I just get a big strip, <clears throat> my hands are a little greasy. Now I've let this body set for a few days because as you see on the yellow blazer the first time I did it, this left a residue on the body and yeah, it once I weathered it, everything kind of stuck to it. So I'm just going to follow that body line all the way down. Now it's not perfectly flat, perfectly straight. So you just kind of got to pick where you want to be. I think I bit off a little more than I could chew here. So I'm going to do this right here. That part's good. Now we're going to work the fender. Make sure we're where we want to be. The fender kind of curves so you can walk your tape around. That looks pretty good. A little low right there. Um, I need some something. <laughs> now this stuff is extremely stretchy, so I kind of hold it, stretch it, and mash it down as I work my way around my curve here. And make sure it's seated nice and flat. And do the same thing down here. Get the perfect angle that I'm looking for here. And got to kind of act fast because this stuff doesn't like to stay stretched out. It might work better on this body being a gloss. The satin finishes it doesn't like to stay stuck down to. So I'm going to pull that around the corner. I'm going to mash everything down real good. <clears throat> Try to save that because that stuff's kind of expensive. I don't know what it costs these days, but I spent a lot on it way back when. Um, there's my Exacto. I always do this cut the door jams and right here and oh my shop is a mess I can't find anything lately this and try to shove it down in there Let's see. I'm going to 
come back with another little piece on top of that. Come on. The sticky side up. Now at this point, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just can't hang over the bottom edge. Because you're masking off from here up. Then I'll kind of shove that down in there with my fingernail. Do the same thing on the back. Just to add a little extra protection so paint doesn't run up through the door cracks and spoil your nice even two-tone finish. Now I'm not sure yet about the back side of the cab. I think I'm just going to do the sides and we're just going to pretend because you're not going to be able to see it anyway. <clears throat> so there you have it. Now the tricky part for me is lining up where our, our bottom section will end. Um, I'm going to grab another piece of tape here. It's probably big enough. Ah. And I wish I had a better way to... I'm afraid I'm going to scratch up the other side. <laughs> so it's just kind of do it by eyeball. I'm going to make my line level with the front as close as I can. Go from there. I always wrap my ends around because I don't want any of that coming coming off. Put this stuff down in there. Alright. So that's going to be our basic outline. I'm going to go ahead and hit the other side real quick. And uh, then we'll talk about the bed. Alright guys, so the bed is inherently more difficult. I've gone ahead and done this side. Um just eyeballed it this one the top line is easy because you're still following the body line so I just went right on top of that um, the corners are tricky because the tape wants to bubble up so you gotta be sure to try to stretch it as you go this side didn't get as well I'm gonna keep those those wrinkles out of it because that'll screw everything up um, with the back when I did the blazer the tailgate I left the most of the tailgate white Except for the top section, so that way I only had to mask one half of it. So I've I, some of the original ones angle up towards that. That's what I kind of keep doing just for ease of painting. So I just kind of started there, and I just eyeballed level with the other side. Um, so you got to do the bottom stripe on this side. So I'm gonna turn the cab around, try to show you. It's not. It's not really easy to film this because my hands are all in the way and I've got to kind of be in front of the camera, but I'm just going to take a strip <clears throat> and I'm going to kind of put it on the cab if it'll stick. And we'll just go from there. So I've got it held down that actually looks pretty straight maybe a little bit off but my starting point is correct I know that's gonna line up so I can hold that peel it up and I'm just kind of eyeballing it off the bottom of the bed it's a little tricky with the flare and the fender so bring it into that point make sure it's nice and flush wrap it around so there we go, that side. Uh, blazer was easier since you don't have a separate bed and cab. It makes uh, lining that all up a little easier. You can just run straight down the whole side. The only eyeballing is the rear fender area. So, I know I've got to start right here. Bring that down. So just hold that one, wrap it in, maybe, and just kind of eyeball the angle. So you're not going to be able to tell too much. I'm sure there's a much better way to do it and make it perfect, but I don't achieve perfectness. I don't shoot after it because it's impossible for me to do. So, um, next step, 
I'm going to go back over the front, make sure everything's still rubbed down. There's no bubbles on my corners here on the, on the nose. Then I'm going to come back with my 3 inch painter's tape and overlap that with my red tape. I found on these bodies, I don't know what it is about the size, but if I just use the blue tape, it will bleed under it. But this vinyl tape, once it's mashed down real nice and, and firm, it doesn't like to uh, bleed through that. So I'll come back for my masking and use this and some Walmart bags. And then we'll get this thing outside before we lose all of our light. All right, guys, it is almost dark. I don't think I can film outside. So I'm just going to show you. Got it taped up pretty good. I haven't done the insides because I'm going to paint it sitting flat. Um, I can't leave the tape on here too long because it's. I think it will start leaving marks on the paint. Um, there's always something that goes wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with one light coat. Let it set for a minute. And then I'm going to do a real heavy coat to try to knock it out. And bring it inside and strip the masking off. And then uh, I'll go ahead and do the bed. Try to get it caught up to where the cab is so sorry I can't show you but I'll be right back alright guys so while we're waiting on the paint to dry enough to bring it in here and look at it I uh, wanted to show you a couple things that I've done differently here lately um, <clears throat> one is this tack cloth um, a couple years ago I worked for a place painting locomotives and I ran across this I, I know it's not anything new but I've never really liked painting much so I've gotten some pretty good paint jobs out of just painting over the styrene um, when you start getting into custom work and these 3d printed bodies they need a little bit more prep and anything you sand on um, and get ready to paint I recommend using the tack cloth my, my workshop here is pretty small and uh, it gets messy if I'm in here welding or, or brazing and there's smoke in the air and everything's got a, a little black chunks of stuff on it from the, the smoke and the air. I mean, it's off the top of the blazer right there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I picked those up at Hobby Lobby, I think. Yeah, it was a couple bucks. I'm still using the first one. You can get a few good uses out of it. It takes it a while to dry out. It's real sticky. It'll make your fingers all gummy. So, uh, I recommend wiping stuff down with that with some gloves on, maybe. But, uh, it saved a lot of paint jobs. And, uh, if you look up close on this body, once I get it in here, you'll notice that the bed is a lot smoother than the cab. And that reason being is I had Richard Cook do all that work on the bed, and it's been sanded and filled and sanded and filled, and it's it's had a lot of sanding on it. And the final step on that is I went over it with a thousand grit, real fine sandpaper. And you could tell just from spraying the cab and the bed with the base color that that made a world of difference smoothing it out like that um i don't know how that would work painting or uh if like if you just had a brand new body out of the box like the the blazer bodies are really really smooth gray plastic so i don't know if you really need to sand that a whole lot if you're planning on doing any mods and, and stuff to it yeah but just out of the box i think you get a pretty good finish out of it i mean that's mine back there i weathered it just because i like doing that but Typically, I weather things when I mess up the paint. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not sure yet if this new build's going to be weathered or not. We'll have to see how bad the two-tone looks. Um, uh, so far, I've got a couple spots where, like, when I was taking the tape off, I hit a spot on the fender. and Just a couple little nicks in it. Nothing bad. The edges on it look pretty good. I've got it in front of the heater right now. And we'll let it set for a few days before we uh, start trying to touch it and do anything with it, but... I'm hoping to get it in here in the next hour or so and show you, set it on the chassis and, and get a look at what it's going to look like. But uh, yeah, that tack cloth, that's a lifesaver. I, I painted that and I let that bed set in base color for a week. And I was headed outside to do the, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, from the primer. I set it outside to paint the base coat the other day and I realized it was covered in dust and dirt and stuff from being around the house. So that tack cloth, just wipe it down lightly and... It was good to go. Got a real nice finish out of it. So, let's go get the body and bring it in here. Alright guys, there it is. Still wet. So, <laughs> I'm really surprised how glossy this stuff has come out. Um, if you look close, you see there's a few imperfections. The edges aren't quite perfect on the bed. It's, eh, it could have been a lot worse. So, we'll just have to see. We'll probably end up weathering it a little bit. Um, 
not going to be anything too severe, but just enough to get in the door cracks and make some of the details pop and try to hide some of our little defects here. Um, yeah, I like the color combo though. I think it would look good the other way too. It's a little bit not quite what I was thinking. I should have done the brown. <laughs> the tan and the brown are more of a factory color. I think most of these were the light color with the tan two-tone. But it looks pretty good none nonetheless. Uh, let me flip it around the other side here. See this side I got a little bit of bubble under there where I put it on a little too heavy. But uh, it looks like it could be rust under the paint so might have to add a little rust there later. Oh, uh, another little run there. It is hard painting in the dark. I overestimated how much daylight I had left. I'm having a little bit of fitment issue here with the bed and the cab. My back wall in the cab, I think I made just a little too wide. And it's pushing it out at the back. So, not sure yet how to remedy that. May have to uh, just adjust the bed. Push the sides out. It's mainly at the bottom. So if I pull those out well i can't get it right now because i don't want to mess up the paint any worse <laughs> but uh yep does that look straight straight enough but anyway guys yeah that's my crappy paint and body special like i said i'm no pro and especially at paint i'm terrible at paint so it's pretty good for for my paint job but i uh, appreciate you watching and sticking through this long video and uh, we'll pick this build up probably with weathering, I guess, once this dries here in a few days. And we'll start working on details and putting lights on and stuff after we get it all done and painted. So, see you on the next video.